receiver on focus, the right receiver on focus. And so, um, and in this, that means uh, uh, we have to move some servo mechanisms to, to pass the receiver. And uh, for the sake of simplicity, uh, from now on, when I speak about the, the setup, you can just think uh, we have to move uh, some servo mechanisms in order, in order to put the receiver on focus. And so, let's start from the user story. Uh, the user story is uh, uh, what the user, user uh, would like to have from uh, our system. In that, ca in that case, uh, the user story said, as an astronomer, I want to interact with the radio telescope through the command line interface. When I ex execute a setup, I want to know if the setup is actually in progress. I also want to know if the setup is done, and in that case, I want to know if the telescope is ready to operate. Eventually, I want to get the actual and the commanded setup. So, are we sure we got completely the point? Uh, maybe not. Uh, so, we, we wrote a, a manual acceptance test. In this case, is a, um, you can see this uh, scenario is a a common line scenario because our astronomer want, wants to interact with the system uh, from the common line. Uh, we write the acceptance test and uh, we want the astronomer to tell us um, if we completely got the point. So when uh, he or she tell us, okay, this, uh, this is exactly what I want. We, um, we starting to write the code. In this case, the acceptance test uh, said uh, we, we issue a setup KK command. KK means uh, we want a particular configuration of the radio telescope, for instance, the key band receiver. Uh, we want to know if the system is starting. In this case, it's starting. Uh, we want to know what is the commanded setup. In this case, it's KK. The actual setup is known because the system is uh, not yet ready. But when it's ready, uh, the actual setup is, is equal to the commanded setup. This is a manual test, and from now on, we start writing uh, automatic tests. The first one is the functional test, uh, and this, uh, this picture um, is the typical scenario. So the astronomer from the command line issue a setup KK. Uh, dispatcher get, gets this uh, command and uh, call the CLI method of the components. The component. What does it mean? Um, each component has the CLI method. And this is uh, basically the interaction from the user point of view with the component. So uh, we should test the CLI method of the component to, to write our functional test. In this example, we are using the um, PyTest library. Uh, uh, you can see there are two functions. The first one, the, the component function, is called, uh, probably you know, a uh, mm, mm, test fixture. Uh, Basically, it's just some code that the framework, in this case PyTest, uh, runs before the test to prepare the test or, or to tear down the test. In this case, it's executed um, before the test and uh, uh, it returns the re a reference from, um, to the component. So the test setup function is uh, actually the test. And, uh, it gets the component reference and uh, performs the setup, calling the CLI method and uh, passing to it the setup KK string, exactly the string uh, we, we got from the common, the common line. After, if you, if you notice, uh, the assets are exactly um, the command we got from the common line before, this one. So we want to verify that uh, the CLI method that returns a string, in the case of is starting, returns true. 
the command and setup is uh, equal to KK and so on. When the, when the system is ready, we want the actual setup uh, uh, to be equal to KK and is ready to be true. Uh, the second kind of interaction uh, to the component is from the, the other part of the systems of the system. Uh, so, from other components, mm, that means uh, we have to test the not the CLI method, but all the uh, API of the components. In this case, you can see that uh, different components can call different methods from uh, uh, of our components. And this is the integration test. Uh, as you can see uh, in, the, uh, in, the in the feature, uh, we call directly the setup method here. And after uh, we verify that the starting returns true, and uh, we wait until the component is ready, and after we assert the, uh, that the e starting return false. But the most important thing uh, in this uh, slide is that you, I don't know if you notice that we are testing just the starting method. That's because uh, we wrote just one uh, uh, acceptance test, just one functional test, but now we want to test the APIs. So we have to test different, different kinds of, uh, of methods. So we have more tests for the integration test than the functional test. The last step is the unit test. Mm, the unit test is a test mm, from the developer point of view. So for instance, uh, inside the body of the, the setup uh, function, uh, there are several parts of code we want to test. For instance, we want to uh, verify that at the end of the setup, the um, servo mechanism position is exactly or close enough to the position uh, we commanded during the setup. Because at some point, in the setup method, there will be a set position command. Uh, so in that case, what we do? We got the expected position from this particular configuration. We wait until the component is ready. We get the component actual position, and we verify uh, that the actual position is close enough to the expected one. And now let's see uh, uh, mm, a brief uh, snapshot of code about the implementation of the component that uh, allow us to pass this, uh, this test. Here we get, in the setup method with, of the component, we get the, uh, the position we want to, to command, and after we set the position. Now, this is a uh, an important point because uh, uh, probably the servo mechanism uh, needs some minutes to, to reach the position. And that means the test um, uh, will run in two minutes. But we want, uh, the, we want the unit test uh, to run offline. Uh, we want the um, they not fail outside the unit test, uh, the unit of code under test, and they should be fast since we run them continuously when programming. Therefore, they should be independent from external resources, and they must also test errors and other conditions hard to, re to reproduce. And that means uh, usually unit tests require uh, either simulators or mockers. Also because sometimes uh, the external resources are not available during development. Uh, so uh, let's see uh, the same unit test using uh, mock objects or simulators. In the case of mock object, uh, basically the test is uh, 
the same as the previous one, but, but if you notice here, there is this line of code where uh, we mock the set position method. And uh, in, the set, in the test, uh, what we do is uh, we got the expected position, and after we verify that uh, the set position method uh, was called with the expected, ex expected argument, because uh, once we mock the set position method, uh, what happens is uh, that when the method is called, the argument is recorded, and after we can uh, uh, check if the recorded argument is uh, exactly as uh, we expected. This other scenario is about uh, simulators. Mm, so, uh, before I told you that in the setup method of the component, there is a call to the device set position. The device is another component that interact, interacts directly um, to the hardware um, using a certain protocol. So in the, in the hardware set position, uh, if, we, if we write a hardware simulator, then we can execute fast and offline both high level and low level tests. Why this? Because uh, if we write an hardware simulator with the same APIs of the real hardware, the, for the functional test, the integration test, the unit test, the component and device, nothing is changed because uh, really nothing changed for, for them. Uh, and so there's no need of extra code, mock objects that complicate the test or the, the features. All tests run in the same way in simulation and in real mode, and we can verify that the real world APIs behave as expected. What I mean with this? I mean that uh, if your colleague write the um, real server, real middleware to communicate with the, uh, to the hardware here, and uh, um, he changed the code because uh, he, he want to update the server, if you want to be sure uh, it does, he or she doesn't break the, the APIs, you can run uh, the integration test against the, uh, the server to be sure uh, everything is still working fine. Uh, so, uh, we wrote more unit tests than uh, integration tests. More integration tests than functional tests and more functional tests than uh, manual, um, the manual tests. But is that the good approach? Uh, not for all. For instance, this is the opinion of the creator of uh, Ruby on Rails. Ruby on Rails, sorry. Uh, the current fanatic TDD experience leads to a primary focus on the unit test because those are the tests capable of driving the code design, the original justification for test first. I don't think that's healthy. Less emphasis on unit test because we are no longer doing test first as a design practice and more emphasis on yes, slow system tests. But there are also opinion different than uh, this one. Uh, for instance, unlike unit tests, the functional tests don't tell you what is broken or where to locate the failure in the code base. They just tell you something is broken, that something could be could be the test, the browser, or a race condition. There is no way to tell because fun functional tests, by definition of being end-to-end, -end, test everything. And uh, I agree with this opinion. This is a recent story. The Airbus A350 uh, is a new airplane uh, manufactured by Airbus and service uh, from the beginning of this year. At Airbus, uh, they use uh, a testing approach called testing pyramid. The approach is this one. It's exactly our workflow. Mm, cover your code mostly with unit tests. If you see in the bottom the uh, 
the shape of the unit test is bigger than the other one. Uh, verify the API, the APAs behave as expected. That means uh, write integration tests. Ensure the user expectation. So write functional tests and reduce manual sessions, our acceptance test, and uh, do test-driven development. So what are the lessons learned? Uh, if you don't want to test uh, your test to be useless and harmful, ensure they, f they fail. Before fixing a bug, always write a test that fails to point out the bug. Uh, use integration tests to establish component API contracts. Unit tests must be fast and selective with ideally one asset per test. If the external resources API are stable, prefer simulators to mockers, and the test-driven development ensures the maximum test coverage. And don't be religious. There is no one approach that suits, uh, suits all contexts. And that's all. Thanks for coming. Any questions? How much time does it take to write the test compared to writing the code? I think uh, maybe it's equal, but I don't know exactly. But um, much time, but I think uh, in the long term, of course, uh, uh, you gain a lot of time. Because in the first two years when uh, we didn't have regression tests uh, and the, the code uh, goes in production, it was, it was really a nightmare because uh, for every, you can change also just one line of code, but you don't know mm, what, mm, if perhaps you resolve your problem, but you don't know if you don't break something else. Usually you break something else and uh, uh, maybe you can realize that after one month uh, because it's a particular condition uh, <laughs> and so you have to spend a lot of, of time to realize where, where is the, to localize the problem. And if you have functional tests, for instance, it's the same thing. If you have only functional tests and uh, after one month, uh, mm, no. If you have functional test, but you, you, you see the test fails, it's the same thing, things, because you can't localize the, the error. You just uh, uh, can, can see the, um, there is a problem, but you don't know why. So the unit test uh, allows uh, you um, to localize the error and to um, quickly um, patch your code. More questions? All right. Uh, thank you, Marco, for your speech.